a former rising baseball star will spend the rest of his life in prison to beat his disabled father 64, Michael Martin, along with the older man's brother-in-law, 51 Ricky Lee Anderson of Corona, 62 Barry Swanson of Riverside on the evening of September 17, 2015. Brandon Martin, who was a first-round pick in the 2011 MLB draft for the Tampa Bay Rays, was facing the death penalty because of the grisly nature of the murders. On Thursday, the jury deliberated for four hours and decided to spare his life and recommend he is given life in prison without the possibility of parole to the judge. After deliberating less than a day, a Riverside jury convicted Martin of the murder counts, found true a special circumstance allegation of taking multiple lives in the same crime, and further convicted him of one count each of auto theft, evading arrest, obstructing a peace officer and injuring a police canine. Martin avoided the death penalty Thursday, as a Riverside County Superior Court jury returned a verdict of life in prison without parole after being convicted of murdering three people with a baseball bat. The same jury that found Martin guilty of first-degree murder in the September 2015 killings of his father, Michael Martin, Uncle Ricky Anderson and alarm installer Barry Swanson had to choose between the death penalty, sought by the prosecution, or life in prison without parole. The group deliberated for almost two days. Martin, who has been held without bail since being arrested shortly after the murders, is scheduled to be sentenced by Judge Bernard Schwartz on January 29. The verdict followed four days of often emotional testimony during the penalty phase of the trial. Defense attorneys argued Martin had been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia in January 2013 and remains untreated. Look at Brandon, Edward Welburn, one of those attorneys, said during a live stream of the closing statements. He does not affect. He has shown no reaction to any witness. He's no longer the same person. Kevin Beecham, one of the prosecutors, blamed Martin, not a mental illness. You have to remember these are the choices Brandon made, Beecham said during his closing statement. He chose to sign an $860,000 contract, to rent a mansion, to do drugs, to party incessantly, to refuse to listen to his family. The Rays selected Martin from Corona Santiago High with the 38th overall pick in the June 2011 draft, and gave him the signing bonus of almost a million dollars. Martin's brother, Sean, testified that his brother's behavior grew worrisome in the following years. It started with being defensive about not working out at his rented mansion in Yorba Linda, then spiraled into Martin laughing for no reason, showing extreme paranoia, hallucinating, and believing relatives who weren't present, even dead ones, were speaking to him. It was a ticking time bomb, Sean Martin said. Martin's behavior became violent, including punching his father, who used a wheelchair in the face choking his mother, and brandishing scissors at her. You didn't know what was going to happen, his mother, Melody, testified. We locked our doors. We would hear him yelling. We heard him arguing. But nobody was there. The next day we'd see punches in the walls in his bedroom. The mother recalled her son appearing next to her bed late one night as the behavior became more concerning. He was scared, he didn't know what was wrong, but he knew something was wrong. I just held him in my arms and told him it was going to be okay. Prosecutors portrayed Brandon Martin's behavior as fueled by drug use. That included a former roommate of Martin, who believes his friend suffers from serious mental health problems, testifying they smoked marijuana together in addition to doing cocaine. Dr. Alan Abrams, a psychiatrist who reviewed Martin's medical history for the defense, testified that Martin regularly used marijuana but did so only on a couple of occasions with cocaine, LSD, and mushrooms. The doctor said Martin has a very severe case of schizophrenia and that he doubts drug use, played much of a role in Mr. Martin's illness severity or the crime. Abrams tried to visit Martin in jail on three occasions, but was rebuffed by his would-be client each time. Going off records he reviewed, Abrams said Martin hadn't been medicated since 2016, and his cell is filthy with food and feces scattered around, he sleeps on the floor and tells people to go away if they attempt to interact. Dr. Robert Solomon, a psychologist who met with Martin three times in person in the weeks before the killings, testified that he never saw signs of paranoid schizophrenia or similar conditions. 
Martin, released by the Rays in early 2015, was placed on a mental health hold in Riverside two days before the murders. His family was having a security system installed on the day of the murders to protect them. Testimony in the penalty phase included several relatives of Anderson and Swanson tearfully describing the void left by their murders. Melody Martin, who took the stand Tuesday as the final witness, pleaded for her son's life. I do not want to lose another member of my family, she said. It would be a dagger in my heart. 